Okay, so welcome everyone to the first ever We Are One sessions. Um, as many of you know, my name is Neva Josevic. I am a senior uh, certified executive coach at Nev Coaching and Consulting. And so I am very happy to see you all. We have a nice um, intimate group today. And um, the reason we're here is because uh, our hope for these sessions uh, after all this, the situations that we've gone through recently is that they will be kind of a nice forum for people to first and foremost connect, but also where we can share some nice best practices for how to keep boosting motivation, boosting positivity, managing stress, managing anxiety, not just around what's happening with us these days, but also in general. And so this is kind of an idea that was born after a lot of reflection, uh, me reflecting as all of you have been reflecting over the last few weeks and trying to get up to speed to everything that's been going on. And so uh, this is something that really came from the heart. We say we really need to, we really need to do this. And, and so I hope that if you do find it helpful, what we chat about today, um, that you recommend it to other people because it's completely open, it's completely free. And uh, the more people we can reach and the more people we can support in this process, the better. So the way I uh, was hoping to kind of run this is just to start off by offering people um, uh, some insights for each session and uh, maybe for the first 20 to 30 minutes chat about that. And then as we get going, either in between each insight or at the end, um, start a little discussion to the degree that you feel comfortable. You can either ask your own questions or share your own insights, but um, this way I can offer you hopefully some value in the beginning. And then of course, the space is open to you. Does that sound okay? It does. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So uh, when this whole situation started, um, I guess, and it would be interesting to hear your thoughts too, one of my first questions was, what are the most immediate things that people are thinking and feeling? What are their most immediate concerns? And, um, and after having also a lot of conversations with loved ones, with colleagues, with clients, um, I think it pretty much came down to four key elements. And so one of those was, and these are the four, is feeling safe, um, the second was feeling calm. The third was um, feeling hope. And the fourth was feeling motivated. And so these are kind of four things that I'd love to touch on today um, as we get started. But it's also, there are also topics that we will go more deeper into in, in the coming weeks, as well as many others. Our hope is to sort of try and track the trajectory, the emotional progression of, of people as we go through this event. Um, so nothing that we're doing is canned. You know, We don't know where things are exactly gonna go, but as they do develop, our hope is to really be able to follow and support you in the most relevant way possible. And you'll see that these work together and in a particular order as well. So let's start with this whole concept of feeling safe. Um, in this case, obviously we're not talking about physical safety. Um, right now, we all have certain risks to our physical safety. Um, obviously, we're on the same boat in that respect. Some people are more at risk than others, but in this case, uh, we're not really addressing those elements. What we're really talking about is a sense of emotional safety, emotional security. And as many of you know, um, as many of you have experienced, at least in some moment in your lives, there have either been uh, certain circumstances or situations or perhaps even ongoing ones where you haven't felt, where we haven't felt entirely emotionally secure. And so when we look at what um, composes that, it pretty much comes down to two things. One is the ability to bring a sense of calm, security, and comfort to yourself. And the second is the ability to be able to exert some sense of control over your circumstances. Right now, we find ourselves in a particular situation where there is so much that is out of our control, and there is an enormous amount of uncertainty. And so, if you've been feeling um, any mixture of uh, anger, frustration, sadness, fear, anxiety, confusion, disconnect, whatever it may be, it's entirely normal. And that's one of the first things that um, I think it's important to say is that. We have, especially when you have loved ones that you need to protect and take care of, we often feel the pressure that we have to be okay for everybody. And um, 
and there's merit to that. But on the other hand, if we're constantly pushing away difficult feelings, they'll come and bite us in, in, in different ways. And so what do we do in this moment? Um, well, I always do this kind of example that imagine you're on a boat or on a metro or on a, on a subway ride and it gets particularly rocky. What do you do? The first thing you do is you hold on to something. You grab onto something. And so one of the first concepts I wanted to share with you is this idea of being able to grab onto, to hold onto um, something that is safety for you. Okay, something that is um, a feeling, a concept of security in your life. And so what can that be? Well, the question is, what makes you feel safe in this world, right? Um, for me, uh, especially these days, it's been having a moment with my loved ones in the morning, with my husband particularly, some quiet moments of peace to just connect and also in the evenings. Maybe that means um, having a moment to do some movement and feel your body in a healthier way. Maybe having certain routines that you have kept before and being able to adjust them is what makes you feel safe right now. So let's explore more of what those things can be, right? Um, and keep in mind also something, we've never been trained in this. Unless you have been in a situation in your life where you have had to deal with anxiety or fear or stress in the past, um, in which case you may have searched out for help and you may have learned some tools and strategies, the reality is that there's no general course that's given to us as children or as adults for this kind of stuff. And so if you're finding yourself in a situation where you're struggling to deal with this, that is completely normal. Again, because we haven't had Many of us have not had the training with it. Here's a couple ways you can bring that training in, right? The first thing we say is you know yourself the best. No matter whether you have a very rich internal world um, or not, you know yourself the best at the end. And this is an absolute fantastic opportunity to be able to um, delve deeper in that. Some people might find that frightening considering the fact that we are dealing with all sorts of different emotions, but I would say the contrary. Um, if you take a little bit of time to check in a little bit more with yourself in the appropriate ways, um, you can find that stability within yourself, I think, quicker and easier. And here's a couple of ways to do that. We work a lot with topics of self-leadership. So some elements of self-leadership, which is a, a rather um, ample, expansive topic, but certain ones that are particularly relevant here would be, for example, visualization. What are you visualizing in your head on a regular basis? Are you reading lots of news and or hearing lots of news and suddenly visualizing catastrophes intentionally or unintentionally? Are you struggling with those kinds of images? How are you speaking with yourself? Are you criticizing yourself and pressure, pressuring yourself more these days with all the transition that's happening or are you being kinder to yourself? And how would kinder be? How would it sound like? Well, imagine having a moment where it all becomes too much or you just become confused or disconnected or you or just fed up. There's a very big difference between saying to oneself, you know, pressuring oneself and beating oneself up for those emotions and saying, you know, you shouldn't be this way, you've got to do better, versus someone who says, hey, listen, this is a rough time for everybody. And so um, do the best that you can, take a moment for yourself here, and then let's go relax or let's go disconnect in a different way. Um, we call this talking to yourself as your best friend instead of your worst enemy. Another thing, for example, that can be um, very helpful is um, connection and affection and communication. You all are in situations right now, obviously, where you have to connect online more with your loved ones. Um, some of you have more experience than others. But what I would say right now is that a lot of people are isolated. And the worst part of that is that a lot of people are isolated and they're not actually recognizing it. And so one thing is being able to work um, remotely, but another thing is actually extending affection, um, extending connection, and asking for it from people in a more remote work, working kind of way. As well with those around you, you know, extend a hug, uh, ask for a hug, ask for that moment um, in the morning, in the afternoon, or when you're feeling overwhelmed. Reach out for others. One of the things that we have that is so unique about the situation is that unlike other difficult moments in life, where you may be rather alone with grief, or with a particularly tragic or difficult situation. In this case, we're all in it together. And so it's, it's likely that um, there are people who will be 
more open to offering, more open to giving, because they're going to need that in return as well. And so I really want to encourage you to consider about ways to just strengthen that communication, that affection, um, and that connection with the people around you, both in person for those you live with and online. And that can be something as simple as a what's up, um, saying uh, I love you or I'm thinking about you or how you're doing, um, or even with a colleague offering to, to share something or offering to, to help with something in a different way that you might have done before. The other question is what comforting structures, what comforting routines do you have? Um, working with some folks this week, you know, there are those who have very rigorous workout routines who have found themselves right now having to adjust those. Um, there are others who are feeling utterly unmotivated and are feeling guilty about that. And so the one things we've been saying is just go slow, right? Go slow, but find the things that um, are going to make you feel safe in this moment, which is more important that you keep up semblance of something that truly is a comfort to you versus trying to um, push yourself to uh, continue at a demanding level like perhaps you were able to do before the situation got started. The other thing I wanted to mention about safety is, you know, we say knowledge is power, true. But as I'm sure you've been seeing, you know, while it was very normal that at the very beginning of the situation, we were looking to get as much info as possible, um, now there's a lot of folks, a lot of newspapers, a lot of um, toxic sort of uh, media mongers who are taking advantage of this. And so one of the first things that I would also say in terms of safety is really limit the amount of media, which is not just news, but also um, social media, even, you know, uh, um, series that are apocalyptic or anything of the sort that might be giving us a kind of influence that is straining on our nerves. Because one of the most important things I think to realize right now is that we have these emotional credits, you know, we all have these emotional credits um, on a regular basis, but we have a lot more right now that are being used up just to keep us together in the situation. If you consider that as sort of the processing of a computer, you know, the processor of a computer, this is happening in the background. And what that means is that you may or may not be feeling it, but there's a lot more energy that's being used up just to get through each day. So things like a bit of headaches, a bit of disconnect or more uh, energy losses, all of these things are a result of sort of the underlying stress that we're feeling. So anything you can do to keep that at a minimum can make a huge difference. So that's a little bit about being, feeling safe. And you're going to see that this is kind of a tandem, but it flows from one to the next. Um, the second is about feeling calm. So calm in this case, we think about as ease, peace, and flow. Ease is uh, the ability to create a kind of uh, flow in the capacity to create a flow, in other words, a functioning in your life that is as free of resistance as possible, as free of blocks as possible, and that you have a sense that you can kind of move through your day, move through your tasks, um, and function in a way that is relatively effective and efficient for you. Um, peace is really about a sense of tranquility. It's that moment when you exhale. It's that moment when you can close your eyes and feel an even breath. It's the ability to be able to rest. Um, and there are many other elements of it. So when we think about having broken those down, how can we um, feel more calm, more ease during this time? One of the things to understand is this idea of the fact that none of us want to suffer. Nobody wants to suffer, right? We are afraid of suffering itself. And oftentimes the thought of suffering is something that causes us more stress to begin with. If you've ever struggled with anxiety or insomnia, you'll see that oftentimes our fear of being anxious, our fear of having insomnia is what actually makes it worse. So one of the things to understand is that suffering ends and we are um, in a situation that is especially difficult. Um, that doesn't mean that we should just accept all the suffering and all the inconvenience and all the discomfort that's coming, but being able to at least peacefully say, yes, this is part and partial of what we're going through right now. It's okay. Um, also helps manage our expectations and helps us have a stronger, if I can say, resistance or anti-fragility to the discomforts of the situation. There's a couple of other things you can do, right? One we say is, and for those of you that are particularly good at uh, being anxious, as I am, um, don't anticipate worries. You know, if you're living all the time in the future and imagining things, um, 
you're, as they say, you're suffering for what might never happen. And as much as we are hearing news that are affecting us and that are giving us some sort of provisions for how long this might last and how this might go, the truth is nobody knows. And oftentimes when we're in situations, um, even situations that we're afraid will happen, as we're going through them, we're often more effective and, and not suffering as much as perhaps we had imagined. And so um, there's a couple of things to consider. And there's a really wonderful woman by the name of um, Stephanie Bennett Voigt. If you haven't gotten to know Daily Ohm, um, it's a really great little platform that has, not so little, I mean, but it has a lot of simple courses by quite famous practitioners. And um, one of them is this um, woman, Stephanie Bennett Boyd, who has this course about unblocking emotions and another one about um, unblocking spaces. And she talks about uh, five S's, which I think are really quite helpful. So I'm gonna go through them very briefly. Uh, these are five S's that help you build calm. So one is slowing down. That means that instead of rushing, instead of pushing, instead of climbing too fast, too high, it's just taking your time. Particularly moments when things are stressful and when there's a lot of change, one of our tendencies is to start rushing about to adjust. And in fact, this is something that can cause a lot more strain particularly as we mentioned before, because we're, we're still um, using up so many of these emotional credits just to even deal with the transition itself. And so the idea of just slow down, um, take your time a little bit more, especially when you start your day is key. Some of you may have heard me say that there's been you know, a lot of research shown that if you start your day off rushing, you um, increase your levels of cortisol and testosterone, your stress hormones. Um, immediately, and then it becomes much, diff much more difficult to lower them over the course of the day. In contrast, if you actually start off your day, your mornings with more quiet, with more stillness, it doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit for yourself, slowing down, um, you actually stabilize those hormones and it becomes that much more difficult for stress hormones to, um, and stresses to spike over the course of the day. So that's just, I think, a helpful thing to, to note. The second S is simplifying it, um, simplifying in general, which means, you know, um, in times like this, perhaps let's say that a few weeks ago, you were able to handle an X number of things, of priorities. But right now, one of the best things we can do for ourselves is really ask what is truly, truly the most important under these new circumstances? Um, for me personally, for me professionally, right? That means that for a lot of us, we're shifting priorities at work. Uh, we're dropping entire projects, starting new ones, starting new initiatives. This one was one for us, for example. Um, for health, for, um, for well-being, you know, maybe you were going to the gym X number of times and now you're adjusting that by doing a different kind of routine for yourself that's a little bit easier. Uh, you know, give yourself a little bit of a break when it comes to finding some comfort, either is in, in, in a nice cup of tea and some food, but the idea is just understanding to find the priorities that are key right now and let everything else go, which comes down to the, to the next one. Um, this is really about surrendering. And that's one of the three S's. Surrendering is not about giving up and it's not about giving in. It's literally about stepping back so you can step up as Stephanie says very nicely. The idea that sometimes you just have to let go and make peace with the idea of what are the things that I can influence, what are the things that I can control, and what are the things that I cannot. And so really understanding that if this is beyond my control, however much it may be making me anxious, learning to just let that go for the moment and really focus your energy where you can make a difference for yourself, for your loved ones, for your team, your company, et cetera. The fourth is sensing. And this is also a bit of mindfulness here that sensing is particularly powerful when you are in a moment um, of stress. So one of the things to do is simply um, tune in, tune in to your five senses. So um, five senses, and let's say the six, the six being, um, you know, your inner knowledge. And the idea here is, you know, something as simple as you're becoming overwhelmed or you're saturated or you're stressed or you're tired and just stopping for a second, uh, looking around you, seeing what you see, um, hearing what you hear, what do you smell? right? What's around you? Are there birds outside your window? Really sort of anchoring yourself into the moment and pulling out, zooming out 
from um, the stress that's around you can be particularly powerful. And the last one in these five is self-care. And self-care is not just sort of the spa treatment. My husband and I were talking about this weekend, how we said, you know, we're going to, as much as we really care about self-care in general, we said this weekend, we're going to make it extra special, right? And that just means, is that, you know, a nice dinner? Is that um, really taking time out for yourself? Is that taking individual solitude for yourself if you need it um, and insisting on that? Is that having quality couple time? Um, whatever that is, is, is that enjoying a shower for longer than, than usual and letting yourself um, feel hot water and enjoy the moment, right? So it pretty much is anything and everything that makes you feel better and, and in a healthier way. And so this is where it comes back to the original thing that we said. It's all about um, you knowing yourself best. And if you don't know, then try it, just test it. And one of the biggest questions is, is what would make me feel better this moment? What will, make, what will make sense for me right now? If we move on to the feeling of hope, right? So we talked about this idea of um, feeling safe. And I would say that safety in a sense is kind of a precursor to feeling calm because it's very hard to feel calm if you can't anchor yourself to something that makes you feel secure. Once you have anchored yourself to a sense of security, you have been able to calm yourself in a certain way. It's really then that we start to feel hope, that we can nurture a sense of hope. Right. So hope really, if you ask someone, what is it? Most people will define it as, you know, it's the sense that there is a possibility um, for something to get better. Right. So there's two elements there. There's the sense of possibility of opportunity. And then the second part is the, the sense of positivity and optimism. And so, you know, some people think, uh, unfortunately, that being hopeful is childish, is immature, is silly. Is diluted, um, particularly when there are serious situations going on, perhaps like the one that we're going through right now. But I can't stress enough how critical it is to nurture your own version of hope in times like this. I say that hope is the wisdom of the brave because people who are apathetic, who are indifferent, they don't get anything done. They don't channel any energy. They don't channel any emotion and therefore they cannot really motivate or inspire anything for themselves or for others. Um, so I think that is one of the, the, the key emotions to be working with these days, as much as it might seem like a challenge. Um, the, the, you've heard perhaps that famous um, adage, that famous sort of uh, fairy tale or story uh, about the good wolf and the bad wolf. I'll tell you quickly, this idea of, you know, there's a, a grandparent and a grandchild and the grandparent says to the grandchild that we each have a good wolf and a bad wolf inside us and they're constantly fighting. And the grandchild says, well, uh, which one wins? And uh, the grandparent says, well, the one that you feed. And so this really points to this concept of, um, you know, selective perception. You're going to see what you want to see. If you are constantly surrounding yourselves with negativity and constantly getting negative input and stimuli coming in, then your mind will naturally fixate on that all around you. Um, if you put yourself on appropriate diet, so to speak, as we say, to really limit the amount of negative, negative stimuli, whether it's coming even from people around you, and try and reach out and connect to those things that give you calm, that give you peace, that give you a sense of positivity and inspiration, then you're gonna see more of it. And so how do you do that, right? When, when all this is going down and we're inundated with so many different news, even conflicting information, how are you supposed to, in all this, try to nurture a sense of hope? One of the things we talk about is objectivity. Those of you who, who have worked with me have heard me say this. This idea of you know um, being able to see yourself from the outside uh, one of the ways people say it is being the fly on the wall um, in any situation you're in. And uh, literally, it can amount to being able to even be in a difficult moment, perhaps even having a breakdown and yet being able to pull away from yourself and see yourself from the outside, which can have great uh, benefits in, in gaining perspective on yourself, right? Another version, which has also been in this beautiful course by... Um, Stephanie Bennett Voigt is this idea of zooming out that another person had suggested. The idea of a camera zoom. Imagine yourself in any situation difficult as it is and literally imagine a camera zooming out 
and panning around to see what else is around you, right? What are you surrounded by? What other um, noises, smells, occurrences are happening as a way to sort of pull yourself out of that bubble when you're having a particularly difficult emotional reaction to something or thought. Um, so this is a little bit about getting objectivity in yourself. The idea then is once you can do that, you can also get a little bit more perspective on all the stimuli that's coming in. And one of the main areas of this is critical thinking. Critical thinking we define as quality of thought. In other words, many of us are struggling to make good decisions, um, to take on good behaviors and actions because we are using either imperfect information and complete information um, or are being uh, very much emotionally affected in what we're doing. So the idea here is to really use that great cognitive skill, which we all have to ask the right questions to say, is this really making sense? Right? So if you're saying, oh my gosh, everything is going to be lost. The question is, are you sure? How do you know? Right? Can you be certain? If you get some news that sounds to be quite, quite upsetting, the question is, what else are they not telling us? What else are they not um, mentioning? What else are they not doing? Right? What, um, what is the story behind this? And so it, it's simply the ability to be able to use um, some quality questions, even to yourself, even about what's happening with you, to mm, disengage from some of the stress that's either coming from the situation from the outside, but as well, what might be getting engendered inside. The next ones are, are I think, rather sweet. And it's this idea of connecting to your values and your visions. Um, right now, it seems like we're all in this bubble of difficulty. And uh, I think it's also a really important moment to connect with what really makes sense for us. So what is it that you love? What is, what's important to you? Again, this is coming from one of the first areas, but then now really nurture it. So this might look like this. I care a lot about um, the environment. Now, if I care a lot about the environment and I try and focus on some positive things, I can say that while difficult the situation is for many people, it's also great that carbon emissions are down and maybe as a result, we're gonna learn for ways to work um, in a more intelligent way that will help us finally be able to take care of our planet in a more respectful and inclusive manner. If you are someone who is really big about family time, then you're saying, you know, a way to really connect to that vision and look at the positive is to say, you know what, uh, it's funny and crazy as all being at home, but I get to really spend more time with my loved ones in a way that I never could before. And on top of that, uh, perhaps if companies and organizations start to realize that remote working is actually much more valid than, than they anticipated, work-life balance might become more of a reality for more people, right? So there's many different ways that you can connect. What is important for me right now in terms of my priorities? What is important for me in life in general? And then how do I try and see some of the things that are positive that are going around us right now and use that as a way to push myself forward? And this really um, gets us into the last part, which is motivation, right? Motivation is, is pushing yourself, pulling yourself, going towards something that's meaningful for you. And so motivation has to deal with action, but also having a purpose, right? You don't motivate around something because, without having a sense of purpose there. You have to act in some way, but you also have to believe that you have the ability to do some good there. So you have to believe that you have capacity in order to get motivated. And you have to believe that there's a positive future lying, lying ahead. You don't motivate towards something uh, believing that it's doomed to fail, right? So these four elements of really having a sense of purpose, uh, employing action, believing that you have the capability to change, and to make a, a meaningful improvements and having a vision for a positive future. And you see, I hope in a way, how these four elements um, come together with feeling safe, feeling calm, feeling hope, and feeling motivated. And so um, where does that lead us, right? Well, right now it's only natural that we're feeling a little sore from everything, if not downright um, unmotivated, even apathetic at times. The idea here is not about perfection. It's not, um, it's not about um, you know, uh, having to be at your very best and highest all the time. And your very best is going to change from moment to moment. The idea more than anything is to try to make small steps and connect to what is meaningful 
and then go from there. So as we said already, take your time, right? Take your time. Um, do the best and understand that that best will shift. Some days you'll be a champion, other days it'll be hard to get out of bed and anything in between, and that's okay, right? We have to have, um, what the third part here is, is you know, having some self-compassion. And self-compassion is not just, it's not about letting yourself off the hook, quote unquote. Self-compassion is really about um, you know, being able to recognize, okay, this is where I am to get today. This is the best that I can you know, do so I'll keep going there and tomorrow is another day, right? Or where can I connect to help myself or who will be able to support me at this moment? But instead of judging yourself, instead of criticizing yourself, instead of putting more pressure, it's just accepting where you are and doing the best from that moment forward. Um, the other thing is also just, as I said, connecting to other resources and people that can be helpful when it comes to motivation. You don't have to do this alone. Again, a lot of people are assuming that, you know, uh, I'm fine, I'm fine, everything is great, I gotta take care of others. That's all right, but asking for some help uh, on a personal level, a professional level, searching out some resources. A lot of great people right now are giving free resources online for businesses, for personal professional development, and many, many, many other things. And so this is kind of a really great moment to really tap into that and, and connect without going it alone. The last thing I will say is, I also just encourage you to kind of come to the table, not as a passive recipient, not as a victim of this, um, no matter how you are feeling in certain moments, perhaps down, perhaps disheartened, perhaps confused or blocked, but still coming to this table, coming to this situation as an active, intelligent um, wise person to the best of your ability. Because I think shifting our belief system, shifting our perspective away from, oh God, this is happening to me, from helplessness and hopelessness towards, we're all in this together. And every one of us has the power to help ourselves through this, has the power to also help others around us, um, which doesn't mean that that should be an obligation, but it means that um, we have every reason to believe that we're gonna get out of this um, and I believe we're going to get out of this bigger and better, especially if we tap into some of the opportunities that this new moment has for us, instead of looking at it as simply all that it's not. So those are some of the thoughts I have for you. Now I wanted to ask you, what ideas do you have? What particular questions, what particular situations have you been dealing with or have you heard others deal with that you like to share or ask? Nobody? Any thoughts that you've had? I think my first thought was around um, the minimizing access to social media and other news outlets because of certainly um, we often have the BBC Radio 2 playing in our house and um, we have a very familiar theme tune that comes on when the news comes on and I found myself getting a little bit um, Kind of oh, what's it going to be this time? Whenever I whenever I hear the news come on, and it's it's not something that it's starting to become something that I don't look forward to. So I'm trying to yeah. avoid that where I can um, avoid Twitter and places like that because it doesn't seem to um, encourage positive thoughts. As you said, you, you you then start to think about all of the the negative scenarios rather than um, I guess feeding your good wolf. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a good point, Chris. And I think we're all trying to find that sweet spot between, um, you know, being uh, uh, well informed, understanding that this is a situation that's also changing moment to moment, day to day. Um, but on the other hand, also, I mean, we were quite disappointed in some of the news finding out that you know you see a headline that's sensational, then you read, you know, you read the actual content, and and it's not bad at all. It's actually encouraging. And so finding quite a fence in, in that way that, you know, right now is a moment where people should be, I think, as much as possible engendering courage and calm and, um, you know, productivity and, and positivity in others. And you have people who are really making a buck out of this. So um, I think to your point is at the end of the day, what, what, is, what is it that we're going to miss? We notice here, for example, that we were looking at the news all the time the first days, then a couple times a day, you know, the next few days, and now we don't even check it anymore. You know, maybe once every couple of days because now it's really um, becoming more sensationalist than anything else. 
So I think every one of us, you, you will know what is a point for, uh, what is a point of um, sensitivity for you? And I think it's great that you're already taking that. Thanks, Chris. Anybody else? Any other thoughts, questions? Yes, I have, a, I have a question about the fake news, for example, because we are in this moment many information, too much information. So I think that the problem, the big problem is to distinguish where is uh, the, where is true, where is the false. So because there, many times there are, uh, there are an opinion of the journalists or, or for example, the authors of the, the something else. So the big problem is this, the, the, the right communication, I think so. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, unless we're in the news industry, you know, we can be rather limited in what we can find. But I, what I would say is, you know, that's also why I mentioned social media. Social media is great in this, particularly in this case, because it's allowing people to connect, particularly globally during a time when we can't see each other, right? Um, on the other hand, the danger of social media is that we all have our particularly curated walls. And so we get, you know, only certain kinds of news and we're not getting others. Um, which is what you've seen also be sort of the fallout in certain political um, um, campaigns and, and situations that people just weren't aware of what the other side was doing. And so I think this is where the critical thinking comes is, you know, if you feel like you're not getting the good news and the question is where else can you go for it? It's opening up to different resources. Um, and, and again, we're global at this point. So, you know, I'm getting news from doctors at different parts of the country, from family members, from colleagues, um, and, and then again, also saying, how will this help me? Because at the end of the day, Marco, the question is, what, how are you going to be served by that information? Right? Is that going to change the way you're going to be right now? Yes, it's important to know when we're, you know, allowed to be back on the streets, but, you know, or when we're allowed to go back to work, all these things are important, but, but you're going to get that communication. So what are we getting from these news? And I think a lot of the time we're looking for some sort of comfort but it may not be the very best um, source for that. Any other thoughts, any other questions? This is time for you, really. For me, the, the most difficult part has been, like you, you mentioned before, um, when you're the person that's responsible and you're the person that needs to be happy and positive for everyone else and you have to, you know, as you watch everyone else around you falling apart and be the person like put them back together, but finding motivation in myself has been really, really difficult. And then on top of that, being responsible for keeping other people moving forward is, is hard, it's really hard. I'm really glad you brought that up. And actually um, this has come up quite a lot. You know, people saying, how do I support people who are really, for lack of a better word, freaking out right now? And I want to be there for them. But at the same time, I'm trying to hold it together. And so um, this is kind of uh, an important question that is not even related to the situation. It's really related to being that pillar in your life all the time and always having to be there for, for others. No. Um, the first thing I say is, look, again, those emotional credits. Right now, if we don't take care of ourselves, uh, we're not going to be able to take care of anyone else. And that includes if you have small children or um, you know, other dire circumstances is, is taking that time to take care of yourself and in those basic needs. Now you will know what those things are that are most important for you. To give you an example, I need right now a lot of sleep. I need a lot of sleep. I need to have my green smoothies, which somehow have some magical effect for me. You know? And I need to, I've completely pulled away, even though I never generally love particularly violent or, or aggressive TV shows, but I've completely cut that out. Um, because I noticed that it affects me more now than I did before, you know, sort of aggressive media in any way. Other people really need something nutritionally. I know other people who right now are really needing to move, uh, who are doing regular yoga or regular whatever, because without moving, they, they get antsy. So, um, and, and I think uh, also being assertive with pulling away from, from people at times, you know, we want to extend and that's great. But when I say that connection is important, that also doesn't mean that for those of you who are doing it so much that perhaps it's at your own cost, that um, you should be ignoring your own needs. You come first. 
And so the question also is looking at every one of those relationships and, and asking yourself, you know, how much can I give here? Right. Not just now, but in any situation. Um, and, and what do I need really so that I can keep moving forward through this and, and being able to ask for it. I think you bring up also the important point that in some ways, for those of you who have had that kind of a role in your lives before, um, may have gotten so used to enduring it that it's like you had time to adjust it. But now circumstances are so intense that it's forcing us to uh, really tap into that, um, not just self-knowledge, but that assertiveness to, to, to be able to really stand by your limits and say, listen, I can't take any more. I can't take another call with someone you know, freaking out at me, or I really need to rest now for myself. And so that's the challenge. But what I would say is really, really insist on, on what you need. Is there a particular question inside that, Julia, that we can even look at further? Um, yeah, but I think I get a little to my stuff, which isn't necessarily affecting other people. <laughs> No, but we can also talk offline. And that's the case with everybody. You know, if you have further questions following any of this, feel free to reach out to me um, and we'll chat about it. But I think that's an important point because I had quite a few people saying, you know, I'm really trying to be there for others, but I'm also losing it by the strain that's coming from trying to, to keep others going where, you know, um, when I myself am feeling it. And that's another thing just to mention is, um, you may find yourself having delayed reactions to this, um, or you, again, you may be having reactions to this in a way that um, is, um, is a little bit atypical. It's not atypical, but it, it may not be the, the, what you might expect. It may not be the outward crying, right, or the outward stressing, but it may be a sudden pain in your back that you don't have you know, or our headaches or a tiredness at certain parts of the day or cravings of a certain thing. So it's not to be um, obsessed about that. It's just, it's natural, but also to listen to your body as much as possible. And that's going to be our next session next week when we start to talk about how to tap into the emotions that are happening for all of us underneath and how to manage them better. Because um, I think no matter how you're handling it, I, it's, it's something to be respected that this is really happening for everyone. Anyone else? Thank you, Julia. Anyone else? Any questions? I can share with you a couple others. If nobody has, I can share with you a couple of other ones that came up on the other calls. Um, Another person was talking about that, um, you know, you have, some of you have experience staying at home and working from home, but there are people for whom this is a real sudden um, shift, right? And particularly people who now find themselves uh, alone or meaningfully disconnected from others. And one of the questions was, um, how do I deal with that, right? How do I stay motivated knowing that I am, mm, no longer, for example, in the university with my colleagues or at the office with my um, coworkers, um, or that there are cases also, of course, many where people are on different sides of um, an ocean or far apart from their family when they usually aren't, right? Those of you who are global, who are immigrants, um, you're used to that, but there are a lot of folks who've been separated in their families and right now not sure how to move forward. And so one of the things that we talked about with this is um, the idea, again, this is where safety becomes really key and really finding ways to kind of mm, decorate your space and um, nurture the things around you so that you feel more embraced. Um, but another thing that's also, that's also really important when it comes to that is um, accepting that this situation is going to be different and trying to look for ways that it's not it's the, trying to look for ways that are not just less than but again as we were mentioning before looking for ways that this could be an advantage too because a lot of folks are are struggling with what they're not receiving anymore and the idea is that as we were laughing at the beginning of the session is there's also something intimate something extremely flexible something 
um, more immediate that can happen while having this kind of more of a remote connection. When it comes to solitude, did you want to say something? No, when it comes to solitude, um, also, um, this is a great time to tap into for those of you that have had to stop work or work has changed in such a way that you have more time to yourselves. This is a great moment to tap into other things that have been of interest to you that you haven't had a chance to do for a while. Um, you may or may not have the inspiration for it, but even something small um, can make a difference, right? A new book or um, the other day we were laughing about talking to your plants, <laughs> you know, chatting up with your plants if you don't have anybody else around, you know, nurturing something around you can, um, nurturing a new idea even can really help kind of take the focus away from um, what you're lacking and, and connect it more to um, what is meaningful for you right now. Anyone else had any thoughts? You just, you mentioned about, um, you know, some people who their, their life is stopped, like they're not working at the moment. Something that I found really sort of surprising in myself is the amount of resentment that I feel towards those people who I'm sure they're going through their own like, oh, I don't have to work anymore. And I'm just like, fuck, I wish that that was my case. Like, I really just want to be able to take a pause and be able to be in this situation rather than be like, ah, I've got so much work to do and so many decisions to make. And, so, and, and I just feel resentment that other people get to, you know, wake up in the morning and have breakfast when they feel like it and go to the gym and all the rest of it. Yeah. Oh, gym if you have a gym at home. I said that exact same thing to my wife just yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, this is your, it's, this is a very good point that you make Julia, because this is um, massively uh, shifted reality for people. I was telling people we're busier now than we were, um, you know, a few weeks ago. And mind you, we're busy doing also a lot of these initiatives, which are completely free, right? It's not that it's not that it's all paid, not at all. This is completely something that we're doing uh, voluntarily, but it's a lot of work, right? And there's other folks who are kind of floating and just are trying to find a way to find meaning in their lives at this moment where the usual structure that they've had has been taken away. And so, um, and there's a lot of in between too. We had, a, uh, I had some, some, students saying the other day too and then clients also who connected with this this idea that you know you want to be able to relax even when you have that little moment but it can be hard that it's just you're looking for that next news or you're looking for that you know next what's up from someone or you it's either you feel you need to be there for someone or there's something that you're going to miss out on and part of that also is just the shock that we're still reeling from right that we're still adjusting to this to this situation but what I would say is, um, I think it's all normal. I think it's all natural, right? Um, there are those who wish that they had more to do and, and are, are frustrated and resentful of, of the ones who, who have mm, so much process and so much purpose right now and, and vice versa. Have you had any responses from people in that respect? Have you any, had any people sort of lash out or express that frustration either way to you. No, no it's just I'm <laughs> I'm the one that feels like I want to lash out, but I'm the person who's the least allowed to lash out. Well, I think that's also something that we can discuss offline, you know, this idea of um, that I can't be the one to express it. Another person the other day in another call said it was really funny. She said, I'm afraid that at some point I'm just going to lose my shit <laughs> and run and do. And I said, what are you going to do? She said, I don't know. I don't know. And, I, and you know, she said, I'm just afraid that at some point I'm just going to lose it with this situation. You know, I'm trying to hold it for the company, for the kids, for the family, for other, I don't know. What if I just lose it? And so we started laughing because we said, really, what's the worst that can happen? I said, you're going to go outside and start singing at the neighbors. You know, are you going to start throwing plates? Is it possible? Or um, and so we laughed a little bit, but this idea of, I can't, um, uh, drop the ball. I can't let loose. And I would really strongly suggest for, for all of us feeling that way, that, you know, all that's going to do is just add more pressure. 
you can let loose and you should find ways to, to relieve yourself. And if that means saying to people who are constantly depending on you, listen, I need a moment for me right now. If that means um, not even, you know, just moving away and, and, and locking yourself in a bedroom for a nice shower or a good nap um, or, having, or having a good cry or, you know, we've been doing a lot of this here too, which we like this kind of, oh, these big sighs and just letting it out, whatever it is, you know, but I would strongly recommend no matter what your position is personally or professionally, please don't hold it inside. The more we hold that stuff inside, the more it's going to come back and bite you in the butt and then it's going to get worse. You think it can find a way to just I don't know what you just said. I was saying, uh, like my new catchphrase at the end of every phone call, like once I've hung up or dealt with something, it's just to go <laughs> like that. Yeah. Is, like, I'm, like, <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, when no one else is watching, but good, good. That's my nice little let go. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it was funny. We got toilet paper today. <laughs> I'm laughing because, like, we didn't have enough. Okay. Um, but it was an order from uh, a while back that didn't come and suddenly decided to come today. And so we just said like, you know, we should like create a game with toilet paper. I just want to start throwing toilet paper everywhere because I think that we could be safe here for the next year, you know, if we were down on lockdown. And so these kind of moments too with our, with our um, dogs that we just, uh, I don't know, you just let out noise or you throw things about or, you know, you run around or, we do these little j jokes with them where every time we do uh, certain noises, they get crazy. So we make them crazy and we make ourselves crazy and we kind of release that energy. So it sounds silly. It sounds ridiculous. But as you say, I think I'm a really big fan of saying to people, really find something that works for you. And if you can inject some laughs and some silliness and some uh, who the hell cares in the process, then um, all the better. I like yours. Anybody else? Any other thoughts? Any other questions? So thank you for joining us today. Um, we're going to continue to have these calls every week um, and we're going to talk about different topics. For the next what we're going to go a little bit more into the emotional side of things, um, how to recognize what's, what's going on inside of these are, and also how to manage what's coming out emotionally, but not just with this situation. Our hope here also is to offer content that can be very relevant and very important with what's happening right now, but it's also something you can absolutely apply to any other moment in your life um, going forward. Uh, if you enjoy what we did today, do let other people know. Again, the idea is that mm, we'd like to be able to support as many folks as possible. And um, in the meantime, also, I think many of you are on our blog as well, but we do have a lot of articles there for free. Again, that's the NEV blog where you can just go on nevcoaching.com in the blog part. There's also Spanish and English, and there's a lot of topics we're talking about here in more depth around stress, around fear, around business management, uh, but you can have that at your disposal easily there as well. Uh, feel free again to connect with me at nev at nevcoaching.com. I'm going to put this out for everybody. Uh, and have a wonderful weekend. We got through our first trio remote working week, so a good pat on the back and have a good self-care moment for yourselves and your loved ones. Thank you very much, folks. Thank, Thank you. you. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nev. See you. See ya. See you soon. All right.